Greetings and welcome. This is Jim from John424 Radio and nopews.blogspot.com coming to you again with some truth and discernment from God's Word. I think I've got a very good topic today and the title of my topic is From Perversion to a Great Hope. I'll explain it as I go, okay? All right, let's get right into it. Now, it's very sad to see what's happening within the last few decades in America regarding its views on men, women, and what is considered decent and moral and normal versus what is of gross sexual perversion. I believe as our study God's as I study God's word and based on God's word that what's happening in this nation is rooted it, excuse me what's happening in this nation is because it's not rooted in the truth of Jesus Christ and his word but it's rooted in its own fleshly sinful carnal fallen ways okay now God's word warns about this and we can read about uh, something similar to this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, where it says this, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are being saved it's God. So we can read the word of the Lord tells us that the cross and the truth of God is foolishness to people that are perishing. And I think you'll see, uh, the more you study God's word, why the world is in such darkness, okay? Now, one does not have to look very far to see what's happening right in our own country and even in our own state, seemingly on a daily basis today. One um, example that is very um, hot and heavy and relevant in the uh, culture today is marriage between a man and a woman. Well, what we've seen in a short period of time is the mass acceptance of sodomite marriage and unions in the culture today. And really, if you think about it, it is like a giant steamroller, and it is ready to crush whoever stands in its ungodly way. We see this over and over again. People that have stood up against it, business owners, politicians, uh, uh, spiritual leaders, they're getting crushed by the culture turning towards this sexual perversion. Okay. Now, you may be a person that says, well, whatever two grown adults do is just between them. Why should we care? I would ask you to reconsider. Not only reconsider because God's word says that that is sexual perversion, but think of this. The roots of the sinfulness is going far deeper than what happens between two adults, and it's now raising its ugly head into the culture and into what we call the government public schools, affecting even the very young and the youth of this nation as well. So that's something to be considered, okay? Now, the reason I'm doing the post and this uh, recording on this topic is I recently read an article that in Janesville, Wisconsin, their school board voted to allow transgender use of bathrooms and locker rooms of its students. Now, you've probably heard about this in California and out in New York, but this is coming right to rural America, right here in the middle of heart of central Wisconsin. What this means is that a girl or a boy can enter the opposite sex uh, restroom or locker rooms simply by bringing a note from their mom and dad to the principal saying on that given day they feel like they're the opposite gender. Now, keep in mind, they don't even have to dress as the opposite gender. They just need to feel that this is occurring inside them, and they can switch their gender on a daily basis. Consider that, will you? You know, unless your mind and your conscience have been totally deceived or seared by sin and error, this is craziness, and it really is massive perversion being injected into the youth of this nation, okay? Now, Add to this another story that I learned about that a school district that's only 40 miles from our little homestead here, that would be in the town of Sparta, Wisconsin, is also about to consider the same foolishness as a policy for their student body as well. So I wanted to speak out against this using God's word, and as always, being a biblical Berean, Acts 17 Berean, we want to go to God's word and see what his word has to say about this matter, okay? Now, as a side note, based on this information and many other things that the government public schools promote and teach, like evolution, immoral sex education, secularism, socialism, and their antichrist ways, 
we often tell anyone who fears God and wants to protect their children to run from these places and do whatever it takes to homeschool or at the very least get into a private type of true Christian school, we recommend homeschool for their children or they will be changed and damaged forever. Okay, It is the parents place to educate their children at home per the Bible and that's what we, we would recommend. So let's consider that too as we talk about this perversion that's not taking place right in the public schools. Okay. Now, as always, we go to the Word as our guide for truth and proper living. The world has rejected God's Word, and so we see, that's why they're called the world, and so we see the massive confusion and the sexual, Persian that, uh, sexual perversion that has taken root as its fruit. Okay. Now, God's Word tells us what is normal and decent according to Him, the Creator. He sets the standards, not man. So why are these transgender ways sinful? Well, let's start with some words from Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. He said in Mark 10:6, "From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female." So we see that Christ is recognizing the male and the female creation, and this idea of people starting to blur those lines through transsexualism, this is not of God, okay? This is sinful, evil, and it's fallen. Okay, Now, if we go to the Old Testament, we can see that God disliked, actually it's an abomination, when men wore ladies' clothes or ladies wore men's clothes. Um, in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Those are some pretty strong words there, okay? So, we see transgenderism, even though these kids don't even have to dress in the opposite clothes. Just this mindset that they could be male or female on any given day is a form of transgendering and um, we see that God speaks against this. Obviously that's the next step, isn't it? If you feel like you're a woman or if you feel like you're a man or you feel like you're a woman, you're probably going to convince yourself and start dressing like that. And I often see uh, not often, but I see th those types of activities in the bigger cities um, when I drive through them for business and you see people doing that actively and that is very strangely normal in our culture today but it is perverse by God's word okay another verse from our Lord and Savior where he warned about causing little ones to stumble and we would say introducing sexual maladies into their lives daily will cause many of these young children to um, stumble into perversion and sin okay mark 942 says and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me it is better for him that a milestone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea again some pretty stern warnings about messing around with small children um, that the Lord had often said, let them come unto me as children. Um, it's not, not something that we should be doing, especially um, introducing these things right into the public schools. And of course, remember, get out of there if you fear God and you fear for your child, okay? Now, also I should say, keep in mind that Jesus talked about in the last days would be like Noah and Sodom, okay? And we see this is happening here in America today. We're living in such days, okay? So that's another stark warning that all of the sodomite activity, transgender activity, perversion, it's happening right here in America. And God's word is true because many people believe we're living in the last days. And by evidence of his word, we very uh, well could be. So that's something to take note of okay now I could stop right there and say well that's enough for us to show us that God's Word thinks this is perversion of his creation and um, defiling uh, helping to defile his little ones that we don't need to use any more Bible scriptures or go on from here but you know what let's go a, a little deeper and shed some more light using the Word of God okay on this topic and using some scripture all right um, Proverbs 1 verse 7 tells us this the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but a fool despises wisdom and instruction all right now in my time of witnessing and reaching out to people I've, I've noticed this that some of the most angry hard-hearted and tough people to reach with the truth of God's Word are those who have decided to dabble in sexual perversion whether it's sodomy or transvestites and 
the sin that it goes against the Lord's word, okay? These people are very often very hard-hearted towards the truth of God's word. They seemingly have no fear of God as they blatantly reject his instruction to their own demise. Now, there's many reasons for this. Some people have claimed that sexual perversion and sodomy is part of Satan and his demons, and I guess that's a topic for another time, but um, we know it certainly is a work of darkness, isn't it? It's not of God, okay? Now, uh, moving on, if you read the book of Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul talks about those who chose sexual perversion and that God has handed them over and a people over. And now it doesn't have to be just them who practice it. It could be a nation who is accepting of it also. God hands them over to their own ways, which will lead to death and judgment. Now this is a rather lengthy uh, section of scripture here, but I'm going to go ahead and read it because it is very pertinent to what we're talking about, okay? All right, here we go. Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they came, became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. This is the cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in lust towards one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain the knowledge of God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they commit such things are worthy to death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in doing them. Okay, that's Romans 1. Very good area of scripture that highlights what is happening in the world and in America today. There's so much in there, but did you notice it talks about being wicked and uh, have fornication and covetousness and at the end it says not only do they do them but they have pleasure in them and if you've noticed this perversion sexual perversion that's taking over our country these people are doing it with pride and they're marching and they're arrogant and they're militant in doing this so Romans 1 speaks right to it and because the nation is now accepting of it this is a very bad sign for America okay so in this nation, this is what is happening, and it's clear that God has handed it over to its own sinful ways, and the nation will be judged in the end. In fact, many people believe what's happening right now with our political leadership, what's happening around the world, that America is already falling and being judged, and I happen to believe that as well, okay? All right, moving on. If we go to the words of our Lord and Savior again in the book of John, chapter 3, Verses 19 and 21, Jesus told us about those who like the darkness and they hide there because of their sin. And that is why the gospel truth is offensive to people today who are not born of God. You can be religious. You can be a good person in your mind. You can sit through religious services. But if you're not born again in Christ and following his word, oftentimes you are an enemy to God's word and most people reject it outright because it convicts them, okay? So John chapter 3, 19 through 21 says this, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hate the light, 
neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So it's pretty simple there. If you like the darkness and sinful and fallenness and perversion, the truth of God's not in you. If the truth of God is in you, you come into the light and you get out of the darkness. So pretty clear, light has nothing to do with darkness, and so we need to test ourselves against that, okay? Now, uh, what will be the fate of such people uh, in this nation that we see that are choosing this way, whether they're practicing the perversion or, or making it legal or accepting it, promoting it? What's going to be the um, what's the ultimate demise of these people who actually deny the Lord who went to the cross for their sin? Okay, well, read about this in Second Thessalonians one eight, and this is a very stern warning, and it says this: in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of our Lord and from the glory of his power. Pretty powerful words there. God will judge them with flaming vengeance on those who do not obey the gospel of Christ. And if you are in sexual perversion or you promote sexual perversion, you are not in the gospel truth of Jesus Christ because God is a holy God and he would never allow such things, teach such things, or accept such things. Okay. Now, Many people will call us judgmental, mean-spirited for doing what we do on our blog and our radio and going out and sharing these truths with people. But it is godly love to tell everyone we can that God has many warnings in his word against what's going on in this nation and in people's lives. And he calls his true people out of such things. And so don't be fooled to thinking his judgment won't come because his judgment will come. Okay, God's word is true. Colossians uh, chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says this, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conscience, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Again, another stern warning from God's word. Those things that are against God's word will find nothing but wrath against God. God will judge those those things in people's lives and in the culture and so we need to flee from those if we have wisdom like proverbs 1 says and fears god, fear this holy god okay now many today even those in authority seem to be living their lives as if god can be mocked and we don't have to follow his ways and we can do anything we want well again going to god's word galatians 6 verses 7 and 8 says this do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Again, a good admonition to us. You flow, if you sow to the flesh and the carnality, and in this case perversion, that's what you're going to reap, corruption. But if you sow to God's Spirit, only there is found eternal life, okay? Now, you may be scratching your head at this point and saying, well, why is all this happening in America and the world? Why is the this type of activity overtaking us? Well, uh, the world is blind, okay? It's spiritually blind. And God's Word says, unless you're born in Jesus Christ by His Holy Spirit, you have not the things of God and you cannot see clear to the truth. You have what's called blinders on and you cannot even see uh, clearly enough to see uh, oh you'll know these things are evil and sinful but people are blinded in thinking God's judgment won't come oh I'm better than the next guy you know many people use a, a, a sin curve uh, a sin grading curve like saying well I'm not as bad as Adolf Hitler or I'm not as bad as a mass murderer but God knows much, no such curve so uh, people are blinded in thinking they can hide in their sin and, and escape God's wrath because it's just not true okay 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says says this, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I can attest to this, because when I witness to people, sometimes when I share the most basic, simple things of the truth of God's word with people that are not born in Christ, they look at you like you're from another planet. They don't even know what you're talking about, and their hearts may be seared from all of their sinfulness, but 
um, they're still responsible for their own actions and they will be judged, okay? Now, I can't keep going or leave you on um, from this teaching here, from this message, without giving you the gospel good news for mankind, which is the hope, right? The title, From Sexual Perversion to a Great Hope. God has indeed made a way for anyone to receive forgiveness if they will repent and follow after him, all right? First Thessalonians chapter five verse nine says, For God had not appoint God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's good news. That's the gospel. God did not Jesus said he didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to redeem and save the world. Well, that's good news, so we want to focus on that, all right? He's made a way through the cross for you, me, and this perverse, wicked culture to be made right with God, okay? But, now here's the other side, okay? We need to turn from our wicked ways, which means repentance. You turn from them, and you begin to seek after Christ, knowing he paid the price for you and is fully God, fully man, died on the cross, as a per lived a perfect life. You seek him by faith and in obedience to his ways, okay? It doesn't come through religion man-made religion. It doesn't come from mere belief, oh, I believe in Jesus. It doesn't come by raising your hand, saying a prayer, or it doesn't come from just words saying, um, you know, I, I'll do this or I'll do that. What The only way salvation comes is through that re faith and repentance in Christ. And then the fruit of all of that is you desire to follow him, not your own flesh and your, or your own sinful de desires that overtake you, but you follow him and his word biblically, stripping down your fleshly life and following him in spirit and truth. John 4.24, right? That's the name of our radio network here, John 4.24 Radio. Um, Hebrews 5 9 says this as evidence that you need to obey the Lord okay and being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him okay so very important obedience doesn't save you but it's the fruit that you have a saving faith in Christ so this isn't about works although the book of James teaches us that faith without works is dead so it's some people say it's the two sides of a coin heads and tails faith and works go together okay as tr as proof of a saving faith all right now I would encourage you to go to our no pews not blog spot site and click on the gospel tab we've got it right on our article also on our discernment page listen to or read the biblical gospel okay and this will help shine the light for you to come out of a life that's doomed and to face judgment and into a life full of redemption from Christ and eternal life to come okay so please go there read our gospel and make sure that you are born again in the faith because it is the only way okay now, while this culture, along with the governmental public schools, may be lost in its sin and the, and the perverse darkness all around it, there's no reason for you or I to follow it to total destruction, right? We ourselves came out of much sin and wickedness in our past lives to now be in him and following his word and his holy ways, okay? So there is hope. We care enough to call out to you here and warn you of your future fate, okay? We had the same fate coming to us as we deserved it, but we were spared by the grace and mercy of God by throwing ourselves on the cross and that's what you need to do as well and follow after Christ okay now I would ask you are you really of this world and are you willingly choosing to follow support pay for what you do willingly uh, into this madness and this rebellion and the sexual perversion of the day or has your conscience somehow been pricked by God's holy word to say no, I can't be of this, okay? So the other question is, will you come out of such things, okay? And come out of your own sin and whatever sin issues you have, no matter how big or small they are, you're sinful before holy God, so that has to be dealt with. And will you repent and follow Christ to a new life, no matter the cost, okay? That's very important. Jesus said to endure till the end, and he said that, you needed to follow him regardless of the cost, even if it was your own life. Otherwise, you're not worthy of him, okay? Now, Apostle Paul told us this in Colossians 3. I read Colossians 3 earlier, but this is a later part, a uh, later uh, section of it, verses 7 through 10. In 
in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you put away the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So what this is talking about is, you know, again, in my past I was, uh, you know, full of all types of sinful things and maladies and all kinds of filth but in Christ I've had to strip myself down and hopefully every day every week every month I'm walking in greater holiness following the Lord it's a process that takes time but you do it by following his word studying his word feasting on his word trusting in his spirit and asking for his guidance daily okay so it can be done we encourage people to feast on the word of God don't fill your mind up with what's in this culture entertainment and all of that feast on the word of God and that will help people follow after Christ and and it says to put on the new man which is the renewed knowledge after the image of him Christ so your goal if you're a born again Christian is to become the image of Christ in the world okay so that's very important now, that better way is through that new man in Christ, and you can read about that in 2 Corinthians 5.17, where it talks about you become the new man, and all things are new. The old is gone, all things are new. So you get a fresh start. You get a, f a total wiping out of your past, and you get a fresh start in Christ. And that means leaving man's ways of the fallen culture, like we're talking about here, um, being born again and filling your heart and mind with the truth of God's word, as I said before, versus accepting these carnal ways of man and this culture that's all around us we have to reject those ways okay once we are fully in Christ okay now the last thing I want to say to you is a warning if you do choose Christ and you begin to follow after him please don't fall into the trap of modern man-made denominational religion as they will not teach you the fullness of his word and God has a much better way for you which is his New Testament life that the early church set up for us and Jesus gave us as an example Example, okay, so go to our no pews blog spot site and click on our spirit and truth or man's religion site. It's a, got a long, it's got a short test where you can test a uh, your faith and a spiritual body with ten biblical points, and then a very long PowerPoint full of much, much, much scripture that points out all of the contradictions and the lies and the falsehoods of man-made denominational religion versus the truth of God's word. And that's where we want to point you. We want to point you to the truth of God's word alone and away from that error of man-made religion, okay? So please let us know how we can help you in any way in all of this. We hope that you come out of the sexual perversion, the fallenness, the immorality of this current culture, the idleness, the idolatry, the blasphemy, come out of all those things of, in this current culture and walk in the light of Jesus Christ and follow his word for new life, okay? I appreciate you listening. This has been Jim from nopews.blogspot.com. Go there, click on our discernment page. We have lots of topics where you can learn all about the Christian walk, studying God's word, and relevant topics like we're talking about here today, okay? So until next time, I look forward to coming to you with truth, good Lord willing. Go out and make it a glorious day. Every day is a day the Lord has made. And I will speak to you again soon. Take care and may God be praised.